hello everybody. Thank you very much for attending the closing keynote session of uh, ASCA, the Australian Seniors Computer Clubs Association, of which I'm very excited to be here, as always. And look, you know, I don't do a normal presentation where I've got slides, and I have had slides, but I normally just ignore those and go straight to showing you really cool stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go straight to showing you really cool stuff. I like to all the familiar faces uh, from the PC user group. If any of you guys are in Sydney, please come along to the user group. We get to do this stuff every month, as opposed to just once a year. Although uh, I'd love to be doing some extra meetings with ASCA next year and try and promote more of these exciting things. But I've got a bunch of cool stuff to show you. Now, I have a YouTube channel called Alex on Tech. I, I'm going to actually I've purchased alexontech.com, but it doesn't do anything yet. So if you just go to youtube.com at the top here, I can zoom in. And if you just type in uh, youtube.com slash Alex on Tech, that will get you to the videos that I do. I do a lot of videos. Whenever I go to press events, uh, you know, any sort of launch, I normally film it. I seem to be the only person filming it. I don't know why. Everyone's got a smartphone that can do beautiful HD or 4K, and a tripod is, you know, Ted's camera store has a cheap one for 50 bucks. You can buy this little attachment here for $20, and you can pop your phone into it, and then you can, you can do amazing things. I mean, one of the amazing things you can do is um, time lapses. I'm doing a time lapse. That uh, phone over there on top of that tripod is doing a time lapse of this presentation, and I can, if I have a chance, I can even play it. But if you've ever watched the block and you see those videos where the camera's in one spot and you have all this hive of activity, you know, hours and hours compress that into a few seconds, that's a time lapse. And people go, oh, can I do that? And it's, yeah, it's been on your phone for the past five years. It's, it's just a feature in the phone. So um, if you want to keep track of what I'm doing and, and attend virtually the same events that I go to, whether it's in Australia or overseas, they're all posted up on there. And an example of that, if I just scroll back down, uh, the Foxtel Now uh, box that was launched yesterday, I was at the event, and you can watch the video. It's 35 minutes and 31 seconds, and it's had 155 views. I was looking at this, the second one there is a, uh, a cable laying ship that lays a cable from between Australia all the way through to Portland, Oregon. And we got a 45, nearly 45 minute tour of this ship where they actually lay the cable at the back of the ship. And they have all this splicing and they can test the cable. And you know what, you want to watch it, you won't see it any other way. This is the actual press event. And if I scroll down, or if I click on videos, um, I have uh, hundreds and hundreds. One of the videos, uh, you see this one here is the the Apple Store launch and uh, the line, how long it was, it went, it was, you know, the corner of George and King. The line went down not just to York Street but down to Clarence Street. And an hour after it opened, the line was still down to Clarence Street. So the line was huge for the iPhone 10. And in fact, one of the things I'm going to show you today is the iPhone 10, which is really spectacular. I don't know if you've seen it, if you haven't, you're going to get a bit of a trick. I'm going to play some of the Apple videos because they're so good and they're short. And you might think, well, why am I coming to an event to watch videos for? Well, I'm, I'm amazed that people don't watch the videos. If, you know, people complain that I watched a two-hour movie and it was rubbish and I wasted my time, wasted 20 bucks. <laughs> if you want to see some of the most advanced futuristic technology that is either here or is coming in the next year, watch the Apple keynotes. It's free to watch. If you have an Apple TV, you can do it there. You can watch it on your phone, your tablet, your computer. They usually go for two hours. But, you know, it's like one of these events on steroids. So um, <laughs> if you like this, you'll like that. And this one here, this video had 58,000 views. Now, most of my videos only have a few hundred or a few thousand, but that's because people love the Apple stuff. So, look, I'm just going to start showing you some, right? I'm just <laughs> going to go from there. Now, one of the cool things I wanted to show you was I wanted to start off with these um, Apple, Apple videos. So let me just go to YouTube.com, and then YouTube is Apple. Right? And so I want to show you about the iPhone 10. I have the iPhone 10 here. I'll, I'll, I've got a camera here, I can show you some close-ups in a moment. But let's just go straight to uh, this video showing, um, it's with uh, Johnny I, who's the developer, the, the main guy, the main... For more than a decade, our intent... Oh, hang on, don't fast forward to Our me. intention has been to create an iPhone that is all display. A physical object that disappears into the experience. This is iPhone 10. Developing the form and display together defines a whole new integration, making the boundary between the device and the screen hard to discern. The custom OLED panel was engineered to fold and seamlessly combine with the external surfaces. And if, if you notice that that panel was folded underneath, and that's so that the light goes right to the edge and doesn't 
doesn't get dim at the edge. So they even think about stuff like that. I mean, Apple does videos better than other companies do entire product ranges. And that says something about their dedication to quality and just amazingness. Pinnacle buttons give way to touch and gestures. There's no home button. A single swipe takes you to the home screen. A more responsive touch system means the gestures in iOS 11 are more fluid. The polished stainless steel band reinforces the water-resistant all-glass design. This new glass formulation, the most durable ever in a smartphone, enables for the first time wireless charging. Our new true depth camera system, contained within this tiny space, uses extraordinary depth sensing technology to let you unlock your phone with a glance. We call this Face ID. It maps the unique geometry of your face with over 30,000 invisible dots. This data is analyzed by the neural engine on the A11 Bionic chip, the first of its kind. Your iPhone now recognizes you, even in the dark, and will adapt to your physical changes. This makes your face your secure password. So with just a look, you can authenticate your phone or use Apple Pay. The True Depth camera also enables new experiences, like bringing emojis to life by mapping more than 50 facial muscles in real time. So you can be happy or sad or cross. Both the front and rear facing cameras now have portrait mode and for the first time you can actually define the light in a scene. Based on fundamental photographic principles, portrait lighting produces the effect of real studio lighting. On the back, the dual camera system is completely redesigned. It's made even smarter by the A11 Bionic chip. With machine learning, the camera detects elements in the scene to optimize the image before the photo is even taken. The camera we use every day now delivers so much more. And as iOS becomes the world's largest platform for augmented reality, it will redefine what's possible. This is iPhone 10. So you can see, it was pretty amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a radical change from the way we've been using smartphones all this time. Normally they have some sort of a home button. This particular one, you just have gestures. So the other video I want to show you is a, it goes for four minutes, but it's a guided tour. It repeats some of the same stuff, but it's a young lady that is showing us uh, how to use this new device. And you know, you'll have one of these in the next two or three years. The Hi, iPhones will, will I'm here to like show you this. the new iPhone 10. I'll walk you through some new gestures, face ID, and emojis, and some other pretty cool things that are really easy to use. Let's jump right in. You've probably noticed that there's no home button. That's because we've made it even easier to get around your phone. Now, wherever you are, you can just swipe up to go home. If you want to see all the apps you have open, swipe from the bottom and pause. Then swipe to move between your apps. You can even swipe along the bottom of an app to go from one to another. I love that feature. To get to the control center, simply swipe down from the top right. While you're in control center, you can press firmly using 3D touch to do things like turn up the sound or brighten the screen. To dismiss control center, just swipe up. Want to see all of your notifications in one place? Swipe down from the top and there they are. Swipe right to see your widgets or left to quickly access your camera. You can also get to the camera or the flashlight just by pressing firmly on these buttons. Want to talk to Siri? You can still say, hey Siri, but now you can also press and hold the side button to talk to Siri anytime. And to turn your iPhone off, press and hold the side button and either volume button, then swipe. All right, so what is Face ID? All the things you used to do with Touch ID, you can now do with Face ID. Your face is your password. It's simple to set up. Just rotate your head around like this. 
Now your iPhone will recognize you whenever you look at it, whether you're indoors, outdoors, or even in total darkness. But what if you change up your look? No problem. It can recognize you with a new hairstyle, a beard, different makeup, glasses, even in many types of sunglasses. To unlock your iPhone 10, just look at it, and you don't have to like hold it up to your face. With a simple glance, your iPhone can recognize you. See how the lock icon opens? From here, you can just swipe up with your thumb to go home. And no need to wait for it to unlock. You can glance and swipe all in one motion. When notifications pop up, they stay private until you look. One glance and there they are. That's a cool feature. In the past, you know, you can actually set up your phone so that the notifications stay private, but you've got to push the finger and then go into the particular app. Here, if someone else picks up your phone and you've got Skype or Messenger or Facebook notifications, it just says notification. But then you look at it, you look at it, that little lock at the top there unlocks and all the notifications come live. So they're there for you when you see it. And the only other person that can see it is if you have a twin. Uh, they were showing some videos of twins who were using the face site and they don't get through. But luckily most of us here don't have twins, so we're okay. But uh, that is a very cool feature just by itself. To make secure purchases with Apple Pay, double click the side button, glance at your iPhone to authenticate, and hold your iPhone near the terminal to complete your purchase. Easy, right? Finally, and most importantly, all of your face data is securely stored right on your iPhone. It's never backed up to iCloud or any server. So when you hear people saying, oh, you know, they're gonna hack into your face because it's uploaded to Apple, it's not. It's not uploaded, it stays in the secure enclave on the phone. And that's an important thing. And also they said that the, the 30,000 dots that is scanning your face, that's turned into a mathematical representation which cannot be reverse engineered back into the picture of your face. So they really thought about how to make this secure. And you know, I've got a Samsung Galaxy Note, and I'm going to, show, for, you know, for equality, I'm going to show you phone equality. I'm going to say yes to phone equality. I'm going to be showing you a Samsung video afterwards, and I can look at this one, and it will also unlock. In this case, it's not doing it because it was in my pocket for a while. But this one also unlocks, and it has iris uh, recognition as well. And I mean, I, uh, people have been able to fool some of those things with photographs, where well, you cannot do that with, with this particular one. It's pretty special. Anyway, I'll keep going. Not much more on this. <coughs> Sure you've used emojis, but you've never actually been one until now. With emojis, you can become one of 12 characters, like a monkey, a cat, or this guy. The True Depth camera maps over 50 muscles in your face in real time to capture your every expression. To send an emoji, just start a conversation in messages, then open the emoji app and choose which one you want to be. Hit record. Hey mom, how do I look? And press stop when you're done. If you change your mind, you can switch characters. Once you've found the perfect one, just tap send. You can even make an Animoji a sticker. Just strike a pose, touch, and hold the Animoji. Then drag it anywhere inside the conversation. On iPhone 10, both the front and rear facing cameras have portrait mode. So now that's important. On the iPhone 8, on the rear camera, on the 8 Plus, which I'm using here, only the rear camera, when I take a photo of you, has this portrait lighting. But on the iPhone 10, I can take a picture of myself and I can apply these same filters to my selfies. I don't know how many people here do selfies, I'm not really a selfie person either, but uh, your kids and grandkids are probably going to be doing them, and with the iPhone 10, you can do it from the front. And look, a lot of this is important because your next, next year's iPads will have this, next year's Macs will have this. Already Windows PCs, Windows 10 computers have a thing called Windows Hello, where you can look. But again, that's more using the camera. This is not using the camera, it's using this IR projector, projecting 30,000 dot, invisible dots on your face. That's much more secure. So this is the sort of technology that you would have probably read about as sci-fi as kids, if you read any of the sci-fi books, like I did Asimov's and Heinlein's and E. Doc Smith's and all those guys. And uh, here it is, becoming a fact, science fact. And you know, you will, if you're going to upgrade to a, an iPhone, have this. And no doubt, all the Samsung guys and LGs and Googles will all be copying this next year or in the year after that. Sometimes they usually leave behind it. That was normally leading. Even your selfies will look more amazing. You can also add some new studio lighting effects with portrait lighting. It's simple to do. When you're in portrait mode, slide to choose between five different lighting effects. Then shoot. You can also edit the lighting effect afterwards. Go to the portrait and select edit. Then choose the lighting effect you want. Creating a whole new look is that easy. These are just some of the great new features on iPhone 10.
Thanks for watching. So there you go, that is the, uh, the iPhone 10. I mean, if I click on the button over here and swipe up here for a moment, and go into the screen mirroring and hope that it finds my, uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm actually connected to the Wi-Fi here. And actually, just make sure I'm on the Wi-Fi. There you go, I'll tap on this. So, you know, you can go to Apple's website, and in fact, you can just go to the Apple YouTube um, page and you can see all these videos from Apple. And most companies have these sorts of videos too. Google, LG, Samsung, you want to see some of the latest stuff from these guys. It's, it's all there. You just have to, um, the content is there, you just have to know it's there and you just have to use it. So, just see, is it gonna, whenever you want to do a demo, you know. Oh, this one, now this one says disconnect. Okay, let me click connect this one to my, I'm using my iPad as a, as a, uh, Hotspot. I mean, I, I don't have to be using an iPad as a hotspot. But there it is. It says Apple Apple MacBook Pro. So I can tap on that there. And in a moment, I'm going to see a full screen image of my phone. And I'm going to tap on that button there. Tap on this. Go into the camera. And then you can see here is the iPhone 10. Now, if I if I tap it, I can just tap the screen now, and it's, you can see possibly there that it unlocked. And now I can just swipe up. And um, so when I you know if I if I swipe up to the middle here, I can see various apps that I have open. But if I'm in an app, I can just swipe through. I can just go, actually, I can just go from the bottom here. I can just go from app to app. Yeah, come on. Computer. Seems to have frozen. It's always away. Probably have too many uh, Wi-Fi things in this room at the same time. I can just swipe from, obviously it's happening crystal clear smoothly. But that's just a nice way to swipe through. And if I go into that uh, messages, and I uh, tap on this. This is a message I did earlier. So it's, it's obviously, it's very smooth. I mean, what I can do here actually is I can take this particular device here and I can turn this one off and I should be able to go to this particular device. I can just swipe down from the top, tap the screen mirror here, tap on this and it should allow me to just do it directly from this. So there we go. So now I can, I can go into there and I can swipe between different apps like that. There we go, it's smoother. And if I go into the actual, um, this particular thing here itself, Tap on this, and so that's the fox. And so uh, <laughs> they even have a uh, poop, I don't know where they have that, but they do. And a uh, panda, and uh, all sorts of things. And so I can just film something. So, hello, I'm just uh, a unicorn. I wish I was a million dollar unicorn like they uh, have in America with all those tech companies. I've got 10 seconds, and then that's it. So, hello, I'm just uh, a unicorn. I wish I was a billion dollar unicorn like they uh, have in America with all those tech companies. I've got 10 seconds and then that's it. <laughs> so now I'm sending that to a friend who's going to go, what was all that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just say, uh, hi Masha, I'm just giving a presentation in Sydney at a tech conference and uh, you're the person I sent the video to. Hi. I wish I, you can't use hands here or tongues. You can't, can't do that. Anyway, there we go. So, so that's a bit of fun. And that's sort of, I guess it's the latest gimmick in a way. But you know, kids are going to have great fun doing that. Already people are saying you can play music in the background and you can sit, have yourself singing a, a karaoke you know, as one of those characters. And I'm sure that you're going to see more and more of that uh, capability in other apps. I mean, there's also a cool feature um, with the augmented reality. So if I go into Oz Weather, Oz Weather is an awesome app for looking at the weather, right? And so here I've got the entrance. Let me change it back to, to Sydney. So it says Sydney there, I can tap on the radar. At the moment, there's, there's no clouds. But, yeah, if I, but at the top here, the top it says AR. So I can tap the AR button at the top there. And now, I'm just holding it like this. And at the very top, if there were any clouds where the mouse sort of, where the mouse is, we would see the white or the the, the blue clouds of rain, you know, and I was doing this the other day when it, so you can possibly see some some white dots at the top there near the lights. There's sort of some and in the background. Can you see in the background? In the background there's some clouds there? Yeah. Well those are clouds and they're far away. So this is giving us a little see in the middle of that pole there where the mouse is, just where the mouse is, there's some clouds. Those are little clouds that are that are, you know, normally that normally on this particular screen they would be you can see the little white dots. If you look closely, there's little, there's little sort of dots that appear because that's every few minutes it's showing you the cloud. When it's raining, that's all blue, and if it's really heavy, it's red and black. And you know, this is how I can tell how far away 
a uh, the, the, this, you know, the coming storm is. But in America, they have their supercomputers that, with an app on your watch called Dark Sky, it doesn't exist in Australia yet. When it's about to rain, it can tap you on your wrist and say, "Hey, it's going to rain in three minutes." And like in Back to the Future, it really rains in three minutes. Now in Australia. There were some programmers who were really annoyed that we didn't have the fast enough supercomputer to have that functionality in Australia. Because how cool would it be to know? You know it's going to rain. But is it going to rain in 10 minutes, 20 minutes? And then when it starts raining, how long is it going to rain for? You'd think in 2017 we should know. Well, we do. So there's a thing called Broly, B-R-O-L-L-Y, obviously made by Australians. So I tap, I tap on Broly. Now this thing, it, uh, you've got to pay four or five bucks if you want to be alerted with a message. But you can see it says dry for now, and, and it says mostly sunny. But, and if I swipe up, you know, it's showing me a bit of cloud. But if it's going to rain, it'll say rain in 15 minutes. And then when it's raining, it'll say rain for about five minutes, or rain for 20 minutes. I mean, it tells you how long it's going to rain for. And the way they figured that out was by taking those radar maps of the clouds and doing an analysis of how fast they're moving. Because you can see in the top right-hand corner, it says 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago. It's showing you how long it was to go. So they can analyze how quickly those clouds are moving, and then it can tell you how long it's going to rain for, how long, when it's going to rain, and how long it's going to rain for. There's another app that I have called Rain Parrot. Rain, it's a stupid name, but uh, great app. Rain Parrot, right? Here they, uh, the, uh, there it is there. And sometimes you tap on the, on the, the one on the end, and it would say, Rain Parrot. It sort of says weird, weird sort of sound. But what this one can do that the other one can't do is that, um, so I can see the you know, Sydney Observatory Hill and I can see you know, when it's supposed to rain and this thing will show me on the graph, I mean, I, over, over here I can sort of see, it will show me this graph of how, you know, whether it's light, medium, heavy or very heavy rain. And if the graph's going up like this, it's like, whoa, you know that within you know, now, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, you can get a visibility into how much rain. Now, one of the things you can do on this is you can tap the, the year at the bottom there, and then you can, if I scroll up here, you can see it's got intensity. How, when do you want to be alerted? If it's just a bit of patchy rain, do you really need to know? Probably not, right? But I can tap on that, and I can choose to have light, moderate, or heavy. So I can, so with this app, I can, I can, I can choose to know when I'm going to be alerted, whereas rain parrot's just telling you when it's sort of like light to heavy rain. But this one has more uh, fine grain control. And um, I'm not sure if I swipe down if there's any uh, messages here that I that still exist. See, here's, here's, here's one from Rolly. Light rain, this is Monday. Light rain in about five minutes. See where the mouse is? Light rain in 20 minutes. You know, light rain, rain, rain. So this is, this, I mean, I paid four or five bucks for the app to, to give me a notification. So I don't even have to get my phone and have a look, but if I don't want to pay the money, I can just open up the app and tap on Rolly and it'll tell me if there's rain coming shortly or not. And this is awesome. This is like telling the future. You know, it doesn't work with a lot of, but they'll make one that does one day. No, until, yeah, until then. Until then. So that's, that's just, that's a cool app that anybody with an Android or an iPhone can get and start playing with. So um, I would definitely recommend you try that out. Now I'm going to start showing you some other stuff, otherwise we'll be here all day on smartphones. So one of the cool things that uh, I have with me, I'm going to pass it around for you to have a look. Who's ever tried plugging something in to their computer or their phone and you, you plug it the wrong way and then you, you realise, no, it's the wrong way. So you, you turn it around and you plug it in and you go, it's the wrong way. So you turn it around a third time and you plug it in and it finally plugs in, right? Well, we all have that problem. So what if somebody could make a cable that worked either way? Well, guess what? Somebody did. So this one is called the Winner Gear. It's from America. It's 20 bucks US, free shipping, and it is, um, uh, it's got this beautiful red cable. I'm going to pass it around. But of course, as with all good things, uh, somebody comes out and makes it. I'm just going to pass this around. So just have a look. You can see that the uh, micro USB side is um, reversible, and the USB side is reversible too. And as it's passed around, as it's passed, so, so I've got a black one here, and the black one. It's from Kogan, and Kogan is selling them, and he had one special, he was selling them for 19, 12 bucks, but they're now currently $19, right, from him. So, bitsmith.com.au, it's called the 2 meter reversible cable, 19 bucks, and it's free shipping. So, you know, if I click and zoom here, well, it's, it's being passed around, so you get to see. But it doesn't matter which way you plug in, it goes. And also, in case you're wondering, you can actually buy little Attachments. So if I just bring up my uh, camera here again, my phone. 
So I just go to the mirroring, turn the mirroring on, and I go into the camera that lets me. So this little gizmo here is micro USB to lightning. And officially from Apple, they're uh, 29 bucks. Uh, Reject Shop has them for three bucks. Yes. <laughs> but, but they're not officially, you know, official. And then I, I bought one from the power, I bought one from one of those vending machines in um, World Square. This build, same building. There's a there's a doctor there's a power box or something in where the food court is downstairs, and they sell official ones, not from Apple, but with the certification for uh, ten dollars. So I mean that's a good price. I bought one last night. And so this one here, it, that's it there, it's, it's micro, so you can attach this to one, either of those cables, and I noticed that the one from Reject Shop, it doesn't clip, clamp onto the micro USB, it falls off, but the official one from Apple stays solid. Now, if you have one of the Samsung Galaxy S8, or HTC, or LG, or Google Pixel, uh, or the Note 8 phone that uses the new USB-C adapter, which you can see is like lightning, it's, it's already reversible, well, you can, this side here is micro USB. So you can also attach this, and this comes in the box of every Samsung, you can attach this to one of those cables as well, and then you can convert that cable into either a cable for your iPhone or a cable for your other Android phone if it's not micro USB. But plenty of people have micro USB devices, whether it is portable battery packs or uh, you know, portable speakers. I mean, the micro USB will be with us for five years at least. So you know, if you don't buy one of these adapters, you can still use it with all of your other devices, and you know if you just plug it in and it goes in every time. You don't have to worry. If some of you have a phone uh, that has uh, micro USB, try plugging it in and give it a shot. So um, that is also a very handy cable and definitely worth buying. Now another gadget that I have is, is um, and I'm just going to flip around because I've got so many things to show you. But another gadget, and I can see it's 322 we're running, running on, on, always running short on time. I'm going to turn this off. Another gadget is uh, from Bose. But Bose has this incredible Bluetooth speaker, and this this is it in my hand here. It's 169 bucks. It's the cheapest Bose thing you will ever buy, <laughs> and uh, because they're expensive, it comes in blue, black, and orange. And uh, they've got a video, and and you can see inside there they have this. What what it has is unbelievable bass. I mean, the bass is just off the planet. And so I'm going to turn it on here. Battery 70%. Battery 70%. Connected to iPhone one one. IPhone 8 one. So it's connected to two iPhones at the same time. And I'm now going to uh, bring up my music here. So give me one second. I'll just go into the music. And I'm going to start playing something. So let me just look at what it is that I've, that I've got. So hang on. I've got just uh, go into the library. I'm going to tap on Moby. Now I don't even know what volume. So this is, this is um, if I just turn on the, the mirroring, one sec. So that oh sorry, that's that's gonna that's gonna go through those things which I don't want it to do. So I'm gonna now turn the volume up to maximum. Now Distortion, like real distortion, yeah. you know. And this is this is incredible. So um yeah. Yeah, honey, come back sometime I'm gonna wrap my right jack sometime I'm gonna have my back sometime I'm gonna fly on y'all get my honey come back again that's maximum volume which probably some of us here will need uh, because of age but others will <laughs> just want to tone down and but all of your kids and grandkids will want to have it loud and so people can't believe that a little thing this size ha can um, actually pump out the sound. And on the back it has this clip here, and this clip just attaches to your handlebars or your backpack. Now, just very quickly play the video. I've got a video here. Uh, <laughs> button here in the middle, it'll activate Siri or Google Now, and it's also a hands-free speakerphone. So if you want to leave it on the table and just answer your phone calls through it, 
with that too. So if you ever wanted to buy a Bose that were put off by the you know, multi thousand dollar price tag, or if you want <laughs> one of these little speakers that is not loud enough for you, this this only just got launched a couple of weeks ago, and for 169 they're just they're gonna sell it. They're just insane, insanely good. So definitely, you know, have check that out. Okay, so um, uh, let me now, in the, as I said before, the interest of phone equality. We're going to show you. I'm going to show you Samsung's latest ad. They're trying to, uh, you know, show why they're better than Apple. And you know, that they've, they've got reasons. Guess what I just got? Cannot take a photo. Not enough space. We've got the next phone. So happy about it. So that was when Samsung launched the big one. Waiting in the queue. It's gonna stick up on his girlfriend and of course he's gonna fall in the water. And her phone's waterproof, his phone's not. So what does he do? He puts his phone in your eyes. And she's like, my phone still works. And so then he got the latest phone, it's like, oh, it's got an adapter. So he's got all these adapters and well she's got wireless charging, which was last year. That one only launched it this year. So what does he do? He buys a Samsung. <laughs> Guess what I got? There you go. And you can see they're showing the lines a lot shorter, which actually wasn't true. The lines were off the charts. The lines were, like Telstra said, I can play the video, but it will be two or three minutes we won't get back. They said the lines were as long as the iPhone 6. And the iPhone 6 was when they first had the first two big phones, a big change. So the iPhone 10 has gone, as Apple says themselves, off the charts. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're, they're trying to they're trying to show. But look, I mean, you can do. You know, it's got the stylus, which the <coughs> Apple one doesn't have. But you know, there are things that the phone can't do. Like on the back, it's got two cameras, like on the this phone here. But on this particular phone, on the A Plus and the iPhone 10, there's a thing called time lapse. You know, if I do a time lapse video, I can go into um, the screen mirror in here and show you what time lapse looks like. And it's extremely cool. You know, I go into some photos. I'm now a time lapse addict. I mean, this unfortunately is not going to be much of a time lapse because I'm the only one moving. You guys are all pretty static. But if I go into uh, this one here, this is a um, an example of. Now it's smoother on the phone. This is because it's going through there, through there, and through there. But it's much it's smoother. But you can see, you know, the effect. And this goes for 20 seconds. This is about six or seven hours. I just left it on the tripod, plugged it into power. And all of you can make one of this. You just when you have a party, you just stick it in the corner. Now, I was at a friend's, and there it's about to go dark, and it's night time. And, you know, this one here, I, I pushed, when I go to the camera itself, you see it says uh, 1x on top of uh, this lady over here, it says 1x right here, I can show you there. Now, when I push this button, this, there's the mouse. If I push the 1x, I get 2x, and that's a two times optical zoom. Now, that's on the iPhone 8 Plus, that's on the iPhone 7 Plus from last year, that's on the iPhone 10, and it's also on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, which has two cameras. But when I do a time lapse, on the iPhone, I can push the two times button and I can zoom in. But on the Samsung, it says, oh no, sorry, you've got to stay at 1x. And it's like, mm, what are you giving me a two times optical zoom and then I can't use it in everything, you know? So you can use it in everything, video, time lapse, slow mode, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So, uh, but, you know, if you're a Samsung or Android person, well, that's come a heck of a long way too, which is great. 